In this video, we will discuss a few extra examples of the ablative absolute. The best way to understand the ablative absolute is by working with many, many examples. So with that having been said, let's go ahead and look at some ablatives absolute. First, a brief explanation about the ablative absolute one more time. You can identify the ablative absolute by finding two words that are in the ablative case, one of which is often a participle. The standard translation of the ablative absolute is with the noun participle, but this translation almost always needs to be revised because English has better ways of expressing the sense of an ablative absolute from Latin. There are several conjunctions that you might consider using. When, while, as, after, since, because, if, or although. Your choices in this matter will depend on your understanding of the context of the sentence. So, on to the examples. Bello finito, omnes gaudent. The main verb is gaudent, and omnes is our nominative plural subject. Bello finito is our ablative absolute. You can recognize it because it has two words in the ablative case, and one of those words is a participle, finito. Let's first use that literal translation with the noun participle, and we'll have with the war, bello, having been finished, finito. Everyone rejoices. This makes enough sense. The war finished, and then everyone rejoices. So let's go ahead and revise our translations so that English can construe a more clear sense of meaning. So let's revise this translation. When the war has been finished, everyone rejoices. That expresses a temporal aspect to the war's finishing. You can also say, after the war has been finished, everyone rejoices. And we might say this in English if we're trying to emphasize the fact that the war was finished before everyone rejoiced. And finally, we might say, since the war has been finished, everyone rejoices, to express the nature of causality of the finishing of the war. Okay, let's try another one. Kaisara duke. Milites fortiter pugnabant. We'll recognize pugnabant as the main verb and milites as the nominative subject. At the beginning of our sentence, we have caesare ducia, two words in the ablative case. So we'll say that this constitutes an ablative absolute. You might be saying, wait, there's no participle in this ablative absolute. And you would be right. We have a noun, Caesar, and another noun, Duca, leader. Now, remember that the ablative absolute often includes a participle, but not necessarily always. This happens sometimes, at least partially, because Latin doesn't have a participle for the verb to be. So the idea here is that Caesar is the leader. With Caesar being the leader, the soldiers fought bravely. Okay, great. And again, that makes enough sense. But I want to encourage you to think about the relationship between Caesar's leadership and the ablative absolute and the soldiers' brave fighting. So let's go ahead and revise our translation, keeping some of those possibilities in mind. While Caesar was the leader, giving you a temporal aspect, the soldiers fought bravely. We might also give it a causal aspect. Because Caesar was their leader, the soldiers fought bravely. And sure enough, Caesar tells us some stories in which his soldiers were fighting not so bravely. And then he showed up and saved the day, and in his presence, his soldiers gained back their courage. Let's look at one final example, this one coming from Latin literature. These are the first two lines of Ovid's Amores. These are Ovid's poems, ostensibly about love, and he tells us in the first two lines that he wasn't at first intending to write about love. He was instead intending to write something of an epic nature. He says, Arma gravi numero violentaque bella parabam, edra materia convenienta modis. I was preparing, parabam, main verb, to publish, edra, there's your infinitive, arms and violent wars. We have two direct objects, arma and Bella. In a serious meter, grawi numero, the word numerous here refers to the meter of poetry. 
and then at the end comes our ablative absolute, with materia conveniente as our two ablative words, although we'll include the word modis in our ablative absolute phrase. So that's materia conveniente, start with the noun participle, with the material matching, or we might revise to, while the material was matching modis, the meter. The idea behind this is that if you were writing an epic poetry, you would write epic poetry in an epic meter, that is, dactylic hexameter. But, as Ovid says later in this poem, Cupid came along and forced him to write in a meter more suited to love poetry, that is, the elegiac couplet.